Hello and welcome to episode 53 of the Kicking Butt Podcast. Today I'm joined by Wayne Ellington, a singing therapist, vocal arranger, choir master and all around top bloke. Hello Wayne. Hey. How you doing? <laughs> very well. Thank, thank you very much for, for coming on today, man. Ah, cool. It's good to be here. Yeah. And of course we have the returning Kim Woo-hoo. McKenzie. <laughs> How are you, Kim? I'm very well. I'm very excited for this podcast, actually. Yeah. Wayne is very lovely, so... You two, you two kind of know each other from before. Yeah. Yep, yeah. yeah, from RNCM. There's a bit yeah. of a rapport going on yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We've nice. bumped into each other in the park right, a couple times right, as well. Yeah. <laughs> Had some laps around the park for some catch ups. Oh, yeah. Yeah, my gossip buddy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. lovely. We had a, a period of a week where we just gossip. Yeah. Basically. Nice, <laughs> nice. So, Wayne, obviously, I gave you a fantastic introduction there, but was there anything that I missed off in, in there, the, the things that you do that you want to... Oh, no, I think you kind of, uh, kind of nailed it. Nailed it. Awesome. Yeah, well done. So <laughs> I like to go back to the start, you yeah. know, and, and get to know people's, like, musical journey. How did you get into doing uh, singing and all the things that you do? Um, yeah, so it all started for me at the age of four years old. Oh, um, young. My, yeah, very young. <laughs> <laughs> um, my sister, Joy, she started me off singing. Well, it was myself, my brother, Dennis, and my sister, Lorna. And um, we were called the Delightfuls. And I'm sure we were quite a delight. <laughs> 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 so, um, so yeah, my sister um, kicked it all off for us. And um, uh, we went through, you know, she introduced us to um, quite a few gospel songs songs that she wrote herself um from a gospel background um everything about my life was gospel yeah uh, monday tuesday wednesday thursday (laughs) friday saturday and back on sunday again (laughs) all round gospel you know um however um, my sister played a a massive part in my life in in instilling music Mm. you know that was the seed that she sown um, but it wasn't just music, it was what the music was about. And um, and unbeknown to us, you know, at a young age, you're just thinking, I just want an opportunity to just get on stage and sing. Yeah. Whatever, you know? Um, so anyway, that journey started um, from four years old. And um, at the age of 13, um, there were all sorts of different choirs going up, um, going on when you're growing up in, in um, predominantly black Pentecostal churches. There's mm. loads of choirs all over the place, you know. Mm-hmm. And so um, there were concerts going on every week um, and uh, again around the country. So you were always going to a concert. Right. OK. Um, not every single week, but most of the time. Some church will be having a concert here and there, and so on. Anyway. Yeah. And um, we were often asked to go sing, um, you know, as the delightfuls and so on. However, back to age thirteen, um, the, we had a, what we called at the time the district choir, and the district choir was the in our church denomination. It was, the districts were broken up into um, cities. So in London was District One, District Two was. Um, uh, Hertfordshire and Ellsbury and so on. District three is Bristol. District four, Birmingham. District five, Nottingham area. Okay. And district six was the North West, you know, um, Manchester and so on. And so, the London District one choir was massive, along with District four, Birmingham choirs. So yeah. You had this healthy competition going on with <laughs> all these different choirs, especially when it came to. Um, uh, our annual conferences, which were held at Brighton Conference Centre. Mm. Okay, so yeah. Every year, um, you go down to Brighton Conference Centre and you're seeing, like, a whirlpool of um, new people, you know. Uh, but there was the the time in the programme where it's time for choirs to, mm-hmm. to come up and sing and you made sure that you were mm-hmm. present, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that journey, that choir journey started for me at age 13 with the district choir. Mm-hmm. That choir is now the Kingdom Choir, oh. who performed at the Royal Wedding. Wow. Um, but I'll tell you a bit more about that later. Mm-hmm. Before I joined um, uh, the, the larger um, district choir, we had a, a local church choir. 
and the church I went to was um, Wembley, Wembley Church. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> <laughs> Wembley Church. <laughs> ah, you know. So yeah. awesome. <laughs> and um, that's where most of my friends were. Not most of my friends, all of my friends were. Mm. All of the church family was just there. And uh, you grew up in an environment where you you felt safe, you felt secure, you felt, well, that's that's all you knew. You know, that's mm. all you were shown, you know. Um, apart from that, you went to school, and then apart from school, you were back at home, <laughs> back at home, felt like home, you know, beautiful mm. family, I've got a beautiful family. And um, so the environments I spent most of my life in was school, home, and church. Mm. Okay. So around that, we had a local church choir, and um, but before you were able to join the local church choir, you had to go through the gleaners. The gleaners were like the little toddlers. <laughs> and then from the gleaner band, you went into the intermediate choir, which were like the teenagers. Right. And then from the teenagers, you were allowed to sing with the adult um, right. choir, which were like the um, more um, adult youth, youth adults and so mm. on, yeah? And they were just the the thing at the time yeah. for me you know yeah yeah so as a young kid imagine growing up and or, or even like four five six years old walking into a um a service um in the mornings and in the evenings listening to and hearing mm. music you know um and it was predominantly caribbean people mm. in there so but at the time they weren't playing reggae they weren't playing gospel as we know it today okay and they ventured more around hymns they sang lively hymns mm. you know they will sing they sang hymns in a lively way i should mm. say yeah and it was more con country western led mm. because at the time before we were introduced to u.s gospel artists we were introduced to um christian artists from the states like you wonder jackson your jim reeves mm. Um, your Elvis Presley. So in on Sunday mornings, you heard Wanda Jackson and Dolly Parton mm. singing, you know, Christian hymn, Christian songs. Yeah. And that's what most of the um, Caribbean population listened to until um, my sister and my brother, Dennis, they would introduce us to people like Andre Crouch, who wrote a song, a famous song in Europe called Jesus is the Answer. And then we had the Hawkins family who um, wrote Oh Happy Day. Mm. And then you had um, Richard Smallwood, you had um, the Winans family, you know, all these gospel artists just, they were just like mm. blowing up. Mm. And this is around mid, sorry, late 70s. Okay. Um, mid 70s, going into early 80s. That was my understanding of, oh, it's not just country western now. This is like, ah. Mm -hmm. oh, this is new. This I like this, yeah. and so our choir directors were teaching lots of songs from these new gospel artists that right. were coming up, mm. and that was my introduction to gospel music. Mm. Um, so yeah, so that journey just began to flourish. So listening to all of these different types of um, st gospel styles mm. was like I immersed myself in it, and. Mm. You had your soul artists going on in the background, mm. and you had um, your R and B artists at the time going on in the background as well. Mm. Um, and even though in our household you switched the radio on, and it was either LBC or Capital Radio, yeah. you know, or one of those known stations. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, my mum always wanted to have a listen to um, LBC because it was, you know, current affairs and she wanted to know what's going on in the world and so on, you know? Yeah, yeah. But there we played or consistently played anything that was not um, seen to be beneficial to our upbringing, our Christian faith and so on. You know, okay. it was like, is that spiritual song you're playing? Is that spiritual song you're playing? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> I remember one time there's a group called um, American group called the Clark Sisters. Yeah. Um. Yeah, heard of the Clark Sisters? Mm. Superb, incredible. So, yeah, mm -hmm. right. And so um, they came out with an album where they wore lots of makeup and you know jewelry and, and so on. It looked really presentable. Mm. Back then, 
you didn't wear jewelry, mm. not in our church. You weren't allowed to. Oh, interesting. You, know, you weren't allowed to wear it because you were seen to be as part of the world type of thing. You mm. know? So just come as you are and yeah. just be as you are and grow as you need to grow rather than adorning yourself with mm. all these different apparels and so on, you know? Mm. So out came this album my brother brought home and then my mum just saw it <laughs> and she's like, what's that? <laughs> Mum's like, mum, it is Christian music. And she's like, no man, Christian people don't look like that. <laughs> <laughs> so there was, it wasn't conflicting um, it definitely wasn't conflicting messages I was getting. I was just getting a difference of understanding, a difference mm. of a generation who were not used to seeing stuff like this because, mm. check it, they came from the Caribbean in their 20s mm. to a country. Mm. They were invited to come to help build up and so on. So they weren't used to all this newness and this new mm. music. They just wanted to make sure that the, the the seed of you, the very root of you, is nurtured in the right way, mm. and they, that was born out of a, a, um, a passage in the Bible where it says, "Train up the child in the way it ought to grow, so that when it gets older, it doesn't depart from it." You know, and that's I believe happened for a lot of people. So the music journey continued from um, being introduced to country and western at a young age, being introduced to gospel music from it very heavily influenced from the states to um church tra traditions and culture mm. until you get to 18 years old you think okay i actually want to find where god is in all of this mm. do you know what mm. i mean yeah because you're introduced to traditions and culture and environmental type music and the way of being and the way you live and all sorts of stuff and i'm like well where's god in that you know, mm. so I had to go on a little search mm. for myself to find out how to to hear God, or to see God, to feel God, uh, to understand who He is, what He is. You know, is there God? <laughs> you know, mm. and it was an interesting journey, which influenced my music and influenced my singing, influenced how I am today. Mm. Um. And so it does get a little bit emotional sometimes because, uh, excuse me, because okay. <laughs> you're, you're, you're looking back at how you were brought up. And it was beautiful times. It really was beautiful times. And you're on the search for understanding. You're on the search for knowledge. You're on the search for meaning. You're on the search for purpose. You're on the search for being listened to, understood loved um wanting to be a part of something that was going to give back to the younger ones mm. back to a generation and you wanted to know how can you be a part of that bit that you can give back mm. and i found a lot of that in music mm. thought i was good at it mm. um i can say i'm uh, yeah i'm one of the great gospel british singers I can happily say that. And that was part of me owning what I have. Mm. And what I have was far more valuable than someone saying, oh, you're a great singer. I'm like, that wasn't mm. new for me. Yeah. I had it inside. Mm. But what I appreciated was the fact that they acknowledged something that I gave to them mm. and that they can acknowledge that and mm. do whatever they wish with that. But what I had to do with that acknowledgement was to say, well, thanks for using me to be able to reach somebody, mm. you know? Mm. And so the music journey continues in that vein, yeah. just yeah. learning and giving back, yeah. learning and giving back and so on. So how long when you sort of were trying to find your like purpose and, and meaning at that sort of age around 18 and finding God, within all this of the stuff that you were listening to, like how long did that take to sort of find a place where you were comfortable and, and felt like this is, this is what I want to put forward and, you know, have an understanding of it. Yeah. Well, still, still, it's an ongoing, it's lesson. An ongoing le yeah. Yeah. It's ongoing. And you find at 
different different stops different stops look like decades mm. Mm. so from zero to ten years old you know you're informed from ten to twenty you're still being informed you're still learning you're discovering more mm. and from twenty to thirty you're thinking okay you're looking back at the twenty years now you reached the beginning of your third decade mm. you know and you're thinking about the future you know, you've got another decade to go. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So each stop, each chapter, mm. um, you're looking back, reflecting, mm. and then you're discovering what you could have done different, what you should have done different, what you should have said, what you should not have said, yada, 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 in order to make a more informed decision on the next few steps. Mm-hmm. Or the next few decades that you have mm. and so 30 to 40 you begin to build something or maybe from 20 to 30 you're beginning to build something mm. but maybe from 25 to 35 you're kind of like um you're still under heavy construction scaffolding still around you while you're still chipping all on the inside still working out stuff, making sure the light switch work, and making mm-hmm. sure the wiring is all sorted out and so on, you know? And you begin to discover how you work, what makes you tick, really tick. Mm. My voice hadn't truly developed yet. Mm. Um, my dear friend Karen would say, um, you, you sing, you're, you know, you're a great singer, but your voice is still maturing. Mm. Mm. And I remember taking, in, taking an internal um, offense to mm. that. <laughs> because I thought to myself, oh, do you read my voice? Yeah. I'm not sure yet, you know? I thought to myself, what are you talking about? Yeah. However, she was completely right because, I mean, you know, she knew me. She knew my voice and she knew my character. She knew my personality and she knew what she needed to hear, which wasn't what I was giving. Mm. She knew that my voice was still developing. By the time I got to, um, 40 mm. um, feeling like yeah my voice has definitely changed it's definitely reached levels that I never thought I could reach mm. range wise you mm. know mm. so the journey of um, discovery my musicality mm. um, how I think about music how I orchestrate an orchestra in my mind when I'm singing, how I can see and feel and hear the instrumentation that's going on in my head it sends me wild <laughs> when I'm singing. Mm. And um, But you're often having to learn how to control the thoughts of what you hear so that you don't over-sing or under-sing. Mm. There are times where you have to um, be very mindful mm. of not just what you're hearing, but your breathing as well. Your the way you might use diphthongs and so on, the way you might use intonation. You, you're going into that kind of realm in, instantly and intuitively whilst in the mid-flow of feeling a song. Mm. So There's just so much. Even that gets me so emotional, do you yeah. know what I mean? Because uh, it's all about what I picked up on the journey. Mm. You know? There's just so much in there. Yeah, <laughs> it's interesting. I, I mean, I've spoke to a lot of like performers now, and a lot of people reference um, it in different ways. Some people describe it as flow state. Some people describe it as presence. You obviously tie it in with your faith. Um, I just think it's really interesting that that uh someone said the other day is like just getting out of your own way would you say that's a, a similar thing in terms of like if you, when yeah. you're performing um you know mm-hmm. you're having a, a really pure enjoyable yeah. performance is it that sort of thing you, you're i was tight with being like present like you're just saying like being there and, and sort of being aware of everything that's happening mm-hmm. and, and not being having this thing going on yeah. in your head Would you, is it a similar thing for you very similar yeah yeah um however uh, the, you know, everyone's different yeah you know? mm. so things are going to happen differently for people mm. 
And all of that is dependent on their upbringing, mm. what was instilled in them from a young age. Mm. And like you said, you know, for, for me, it was faith. I ha always had that to go back to. Yeah. Regardless, if I wanted to feel like, you know, not feel like, if I, if I felt like I ran away from faith, and faith to some people who are of a Christian faith would mean like you're running away from the Lord or you're running away from mm. church and stuff. But I couldn't run from it because yeah. it, was, it, it was me. Yeah. I was in it, you know, and it was in me. So I couldn't run mm. from it. I went to it when I felt low or I felt things were a bit patchy in my life mm. or feeling quite dark or so, you know, that's where I went. That was my hiding place. That was my place to go hibernate mm. and regenerate. Mm. Bring that on stage, you know, you, s you can still hibernate and perform. Mm. You know? Interesting. <laughs> nice. They don't cover this thing in terrorists for nothing, you know. <laughs> 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 um so so yeah, um what that does what does that look like when you're on stage and you're still in hibernation? Mm. You know? You're still hibernating and still able to perform. Um you're a reflection of what's going on inside when you're performing and you can hide there and sing from there. Um, I kind of felt it um, at times um, in performances where you just, you can put it as presence, mm -hmm. but then there's always something going on in the background where it's being present and that's where I'm at. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, I do, yeah. So, but no one ever, no one will ever know what that is exactly because it's not their business yeah and that's the that's the space and the place for you to continue to show up mm. turn up do what you need to do and once you've done it do your little mingling do your little chatting with stuff with people and then you can disappear <laughs> you know mm. and not feel that you have to be something extra or be something more or anything less you can just be present while still being that little closet just being mindful of and being aware of people around you but also being aware of yourself yeah is there a is there anything you do before a performance or anything is there anything that you do to sort of put yourself in that space maybe if you're not feeling quite there is there anything mm. like before a performance um, not necessarily. No. No. Um, sometimes I have to. Mm. Um, there's been occasions where um, in sound check you forget the words <laughs> of a song because you're in your head. Yeah. 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 You know, when you're in your head, you're not in your place of safety, you know, because um, you're allowing your thoughts to bombard you with lots of different things other feelings and other thought other thoughts and so on um so that's you in your head where you just can't think straight mm. Mm. so if ever if there's ever a time that i feel like that um i would need to be told get out your head <laughs> mm. which has happened a few times you know yeah um and uh and yeah it's just a reminder to for me to go away just find a few minutes hibernate and um, go back into that little space and uh, just have a little chat with myself in that little office <laughs> about why are you here? What's the purpose? What's the meaning? Um, and be aware of that. Mm. And nothing happens after I've spoken about that. There's no like, you know, hardcore meditation right. or anything like that. Just, just like, just remember why you're here. Yeah. You know? Mm. And um, even like now. You know, I'm remembering why I'm here. There's a purpose and there's meaning in it. And when it's time to perform, be like water. Just let it flow. <laughs> just perform without having to think about what it is you're saying, what the next line is, because it just comes to you. When you empty your mind of um, the frustrations of not knowing what, you know, what the parts was or what the harmony part was or words and so on um you leave room for inspiration to come to you and when inspiration comes to you they're all waiting out there <laughs> to just 
right, is he ready for us yet? No, he's still, his mind's still clogged. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So they wait for you to empty your mind so that you can be inspired by what's ready to pour into you in order for you to pour out. Mm. You know? And that's all I, that's all that's the little process I go through. But yeah. it's not like a regular thing that I have to do. When you say let it pour they let it pour into you, what 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 is that? Yeah. Inspiration. Inspiration. Mm. And where this is a big question. <laughs> where do we think that source comes from? Do we I, I mean well, I don't we, know. We, we don't think where it comes from. We just know it just it's there. is. Yeah. Yeah. It's just there. If we begin to think where it is, then that's you then We've clogging up your mind. Mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's why it's called inspiration. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You don't try and analyze what inspiration is or where it sits or where it lies. It's it's just there. Mm. You know? And because you know it's there, that's when you're able to let go of whatever is clogging those pipes. Mm. Um, let them go. Put them on a cloud. Watch them roll by. And then you allow inspiration to come. Not overthinking, not even thinking, oh, I need you to come inspiration, I need inspiration. <laughs> it's, not even, it's not even that. Mm -hmm. you know? It's um, trusting yourself, allowing yourself to trust yourself that when you do walk out on stage or when you're going to an interview or when you're going to even cooking something, hoping that it will turn out well, just let go of those thoughts, man, and just do the cooking. <laughs> you know, go and make your tea. You don't think about, oh, I need to put this amount of stuff in the tea, or, you know, you don't think about it. You just mm. go and do it. Yeah. I'm completely on board with all this, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Just, I'm just being devil's <laughs> advocate. Right? No, that's cool. Right? I yeah, completely, yeah. It's, it's interesting hearing you talk about because I, I, like, I agree mm. wholeheartedly with everything that you're saying. Um, I'm, I've never been a person of like faith, but over the past like couple of years, I've kind of gained a sort of spirituality yeah. mm. within myself and like understanding myself. And from that sort of, and you know, I'll paraphrase it as presence or yeah, that sort of thing. Amazing things have happened because of it, mm. and and you know, just being able to be purely, even like yeah. this situation right here now. Mm. Like when we started the podcast, I was in a very different headspace. I mean, yeah. like a year ago, I don't mean 20 yeah, minutes yeah, ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but then having this sort of um, life changing thing happen and becoming aware of this um, inner presence within myself that is separate from the thoughts and, mm. and all that, yeah. just even this in this context of having conversations with people, like just having pure listening and pure just yeah. being here other people open up in a completely way. new way from yeah. not even physically doing anything mm. but just by being mm. attentive yeah, and yeah, yeah. putting your energy across to someone yeah. Mm. it's yeah it's amazing mm. and it's, it's so interesting hearing it from people describe it in so many different mm. ways mm. and but there isn't a way to like just thumbtack it and there is, is, is this and the thing is you've got to find it for yourself yeah yeah sure. yeah because yeah. it's gonna it's your experience and it's going to be everything about your experience is your experience and mm. you will describe it you ex you'll explain it in the way that it works for you mm. you know um and then there's labels that people want to put on things mm. you know which i've just decided I'm done with labels. <laughs> <laughs> you know? yeah. And you have to be qualified to do this. You have to go to university to do this and, yeah. and blah, blah, blah. And I thought, well, strip all of that away. Mm. You know? Mm. And just be present. Yeah. You know? So, yes. at, <laughs> at, at the start of the podcast, um, we very briefly mentioned that you run choirs. Mm. Um, uh, quite a few, or mm. a few you do. Mm. Um, I was just wondering... Is this something that you kind of speak about with them when you're in sessions with them? Um, or do you find that it's more just a natural environment and it doesn't even need to be spoken about, um, the kind of like letting go? Yeah. Um, every choir is different. Mm. Every individual in the choir are different. Yeah. However, you're often sharing the message of hope. You're sharing a message of joy and love and peace and things like that and the response is always different mm. you know 
Um, it's different because the feeling is different. The cultures are different. Excuse me. <laughs> <So good. laughs> um, uh, excuse me. Yeah. So the cultures are different. The traditions of individuals in one room that have been brought up in different spaces, areas, countries, and so on, it's all different. Yeah. And that's the joy of the unknown of what you're going to get. Mm. I'd rather, you know, not know um, whether people can sing really well or not. I'd rather just turn up and just, I'll work with you where you're at. Yeah. Rather than, oh, this choir's really good. They're great singers and da 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 da. Mm. That sets you up mm. for what you get in. And a lot of people want that. A lot of tutors might want to know what sort of singing mm. or the professional singers or the uh, ad the more beginner stage or average stage. I'm like, I, d I actually don't care. <laughs> yeah. You know? It's not about that for It's you. not about that for yeah. me. Yeah. Um, and it, it was before, but I thought mm. to myself, I don't like that. Mm. So I'll switch it up mm. Mm. to how well I can make people feel a little bit more comfortable mm. in order for them to take themselves on a journey and find themselves in their song, in the song that they sing, yeah. in the meaning of the song that they sing, with the understanding that they're doing that for them, not for me. Now. I'm there to kind of like help you through that or navigate that journey mm. rather than me telling you this is what you have to think this is what you have to feel this is what you have to do you know what i mean yeah. i'd rather teach a song let you know what the song means and mm. let you figure out what it means for you if it's just a singing experience for you then fine mm -hmm. if there's more meaning that you want from it fine that's completely up to you you know um in the uk the different choirs that I that I've sung in, that I've sung with, um, they're they're all different because again, the background's different. Mm. The the tradition and the culture of the foundation of each choir are different. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So what I say to them, um, it's always different. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah every time yeah yeah but one thing i do i do share with a lot of these choirs is that they sound great you know mm. and the sounding great might not always be what they sound like it might be what mm. they feel like mm. Mm. you know um they feel together they look like they feel together they're achieving something mm. that's what they sound like in my head mm. yeah. you know so when they do sing i'm hearing far beyond what they can hear themselves you know, I'm hearing their spirit, I'm hearing their joy, I'm hearing their excitement and their yeah. mood for singing. Mm. That's what I hear. So when folks tell me that, oh, I can't sing, I'm a really bad singer, I'm like, you don't even know yourself. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I've got something coming for you. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. Um, and that's been quite a big motto of mine. Yeah. Um, everyone can sing, but not everyone's a singer. Mm. You know? But everyone can sing. Yeah. As long as you've got a voice to speak and uh, you can you can sing. It's just a willingness to mm. learn how to, but also you're learning about yourself. Mm. And that's one of the things that I teach my students. Study yourself and teach yourself how to sing from the inside out. Yeah. Once you can do that, and yeah, you can you're you're on a on a great journey. And folks, folks will say, oh, I can't sing because what they're informed by. You hear music on the telephone. You hear music in the supermarket. <laughs> you hear singing in, on the radio. You, you hear sing, music and singing is everywhere. Mm. Um, and so we're taught or conditioned to judge ourselves by what we hear and Very by much. what we see yeah. other people applaud um, by what radio and media puts out there, this person's great. Da, 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 da. So you're thinking to yourself, I'm just as good as them. <laughs> or you're thinking, oh, I wish I could be as great as them. When you can be, you might even be greater than them who are being applauded for. Mm. Mm. You know, so all this ideology about who's the greatest, what's the greatest, you know, when greatness sits right inside you. Mm. I've heard too many um, presentations and um, 
preaching and teachings about the grave being or the graveyards being the richest place on the planet because people die with their greatest gifts they've they've, they've never mm. ventured into um, writing that book that they've wished they wrote mm. you know they've never sung that song that they wish that they would write or mm. put out there so all of that gets lost in the grave you know mm. but yet there's plenty of people out there that are great and we've t talked about the places that we've studied mm. and how that's changed mm. but you went there with a purpose when people um, put that light out the light's not actually gone out the light is still there it's just dim mm. you know so to pick <laughs> it back up again is something that you were created to do you know something that you were meant to do something that you were not necessarily born to do but you were brought here to carry out a particular task mm. and it could be that um, some of us go through uh, channels or go through situations and circumstances in our lives to find out that isn't the real purpose mm. do you know what I mean mm. it's an enjoyment mm. Yeah. Something yeah. that you like. Yeah. But not necessarily what you were called to do. Yeah. You know? And it could be that that thing that you enjoyed doing was something therapeutic for you to go away and just listen to and just go and, you know, sing out or play out or take pictures of or did it or whatever it was. Mm. It's the enjoyment thing. However, the bigger purpose is where you've been drawn mm. to most, where you've been not even motivated or not what you've been motivated to do, but what you've been driven to do. Yeah. You know? Like a, a deeper calling. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Oh, Wayne, <laughs> so many pearls of wisdom. <laughs> <I know. laughs> Go on for hours. I could literally listen to you talk at me for hours. Yeah. Your voice is so soothing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of soothing voices, mm. Wayne, you, of course, are going to perform a couple of tracks for us today. Yeah. Um, so if you want to make your way over to the performance area okay. and get ready, right. I will um, inform the people at home about what they're about to hear. Cool. Lovely. <laughs> I go now? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you go for a moment. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> so you've just been listening to the soothing voice of Wayne Ellington. He's going to do a couple of tracks for us today. Um, I hope you enjoy what you're about to hear. Um, go and check Wayne out online. He's doing loads of great work, sing therapy, vocal arranging, choir stuff. He's worked with a lot of really interesting artists as well, which we're going to get into in the second half. I really enjoyed that. I can't wait for the second half. Wayne is just wonderful. He really is. Honestly. Why have I not met this man beforehand? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, this is crazy. Now's the time. Now Now's the time for everyone to meet Wayne. Exactly. I hope you're enjoying it as much as we are. Um, without further adieu, over to Wayne Ellington to perform some music for us. We'll see you in a second. My name is Wayne Ellington, and the track I'm going to do for you now is Unforgettable. Unforgettable. 
This is Give Us Peace. Give us peace. 
was peace. Lord, we need your strength and mercy. Uh, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, all Wayne Ellington 7, the number 7. And uh, you can find me on Facebook as well. And any YouTube channels, you can find me on there, any YouTube channel. My YouTube channel, <laughs> Wayne Ellington. Just type in Wayne Ellington Singer, and uh, you'll find me there. Thanks, Wayne. Thank you. Welcome back to episode 53 of the King Buck Podcast. You've just watched a delightful performance from our guest today, Wayne Ellington. Well done, Wayne. Woo! Thanks. Yeah. Thoroughly enjoyable. <laughs> I've not actually heard you sing before and, until you did that. And mm. <whistles> delightful. Powerful voice. Cheers. One of them, like, kind of like, it uh, just, it touches me in my soul in the most, like, nice way. Do you know what mm. I mean? I find it very soothing to listen to, mm. and, you know, so... But as you said, okay. you've heard this before, and you don't want to hear you it. Don't anymore, hear do you don't want to hear it. No, it's 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 a pleasure to hear it. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what I do with that. Yeah, you know? yeah, 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 yeah. And so you know, I I I mentioned that before. Yeah. You know, so mm. uh, I'm glad that it's done something for you. Yeah, you know? yeah. Um, so yeah. Yeah. So I tell know. us. So you, you you picked two pieces to do for us. Mm. Do you want to tell us? The two pieces and why you, you chose to perform them? Yeah. Um, Unforgettable, I recorded that um, 2017. Okay. I was doing my own show, um, tribute shows to Nat King Cole, and um, I was doing that around the, around the UK. And 
it was one song it was maybe the only song actually that i rearranged you know okay. um from its original um tune and so it it meant quite a lot to me mm. it began to mean something more than just a rearrangement of um a song that people resonate with mm. um it meant more in the sense of um people that I'd lost um, mm. like my parents for example um, I was then thinking about my godparents and friends and so on and um, uh, as, reason, uh, as recent as 2020 lost my brother mm. um, and uh, that was traumatic for me traumatic in the sense that it affected my body yeah um, the way I handled that was tough. There was no right or wrong about how I handled it. Mm. Because there's no rule book about how you handle grief mm. or bereavement. Um, and so, again, I was in that roller coaster of finding myself in grief and allowing myself to grieve and you know unapologetically so whatever that looked like and however it felt i had to allow that bit to breathe mm. rather than me not give it the opportunity to breathe mm. otherwise there will be no understanding on how to handle it you know? mm. um, and so singing the song unforgettable um just the very word itself meant a lot you know, the other words meant something as well, but mm. unforgettable, whenever you mention that word, that's all I can think of, you know, it, that unforgettable spirit that I was given the opportunity to to meet. You mm. know, that spirit that I was able to have a laugh with, the, that spirit that I shared room with, shared bed with, with comfort at night and in the mornings have a great laugh with and went to school with. Um, that spirit that um, encouraged me when I was going through good times, bad times, um, that unforgettable spirit that nurtured my musicality as well, that gave me inspiration. Mm. And so singing the song meant, you know, as recent as him. Yeah. Mm. Um, and that unforgettable spirit. And... Uh, The moment I I can think of him now in this moment mm. means that I've gone through the pain of loss, you know, and have really appreciated having gone through the pain because I'm glad I went through the pain to know what that might have felt like or what that felt like, you know, mm. and to appreciate it give it the respect that it's due yeah. that it came and it didn't last but it was an experience and the experience um, doesn't need to live on you know but the memory of the beautiful spirit that I had time to um, spend half of my life with was a grand experience you know so that was unforgettable, and it will forever be unforgettable, mm. yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I feel that for other events and other experiences in my life. So the song means more than just the song that we all know it to be yeah. from the person who made the song famous, you know. Um, so that's my uh, interpretation of of a beautiful piece. Yeah. Mm. Um, and the second song um, I sang, Give Us Peace, um, written by um, Edwin Hawkins, who wrote Oh Happy Day. Um, that song's a prayer. Um, and I recorded that song with my community choir, Manchester Inspirational Voices. And uh, the song is really... Um, 
poignant song for today because the climate that we're living in now, um, we're living in a lot of uncertainties. And when you bring it home, yeah, the song speaks about the uncertainties for yourself or that you find yourself in. What is uncertain? What does that look like for you as an individual, much less the rest of the world? And so the song Give Us Peace is about give me that internal peace inside so I can still feel myself, so I can still hear myself, so I can still see myself being relevant, you know, um, in a world that's in a pandemic. Yeah. Am I still relevant? We've lost jobs. We've lost people. We've lost a lot of things. But am I still relevant? That's why I need peace of mind in order to know the answer so what do you do hibernate <laughs> yeah clear your head yeah yeah uh, and allow the inspiring words the inspiring feelings the inspiring thoughts to travel through your mind and you capture what you can in order to make the next best move mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> brad can't handle this <laughs> <laughs> Today of all days. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that, mm. Wayne. That, mm. that that really that means a lot. Um, you touched briefly on um, the Manchester Inspirational Voices mm. Choir. So that's something you set up. Yeah. Uh, how long ago? Oh, Sixteen years ago. Right. Okay. Yeah. And so, how, how did that come to be a thing? Yeah. Well, um, again. Uh, qu choirs was always my thing you know I love choirs I love everything about being in a choir mm -hmm. what choir actually choirs singing in choirs and directing choirs what it brings to not just one or two people but to a nation yeah. mm. um, the camaraderie of happenings within a choir is mm. extraordinary yeah. and so whilst um, from London originally anyway and so being in London and um, being in so many different choirs and experiencing a lot of um, beautiful things about singing in a choir and what it brought me to, brought me to different countries. Mm -hmm. um, you met new people, you know. Um, you were chosen to, to go to a particular event to be a backing vocal for, you know, as a smaller group. Um, you were learning new songs, you were learning so much more about value, values, personal values, cultural and traditional values, not just of the culture that I was from, but you learn about other cultures mm. and how to bring, um, or how to marry your culture with another and how that can work beautifully mm. if others are willing for that to work well. Mm -hmm. And all of that is about information, information, um, accepting information about being black, being white, being Asian, being whatever, you know. And if both parties are happy to to learn, open, there's an openness to learn, then the singing will be great, mm. you know, because yeah. it no longer becomes about the culture and the traditions anymore. It becomes about oneness mm. of minds, about hearts, and that's how you create great music, mm. you know. Um, and so that was the great thing that I learned about singing in a choir. Mm. So when I came to Manchester, that was all I had in my head. Mm. I had, there were choirs around, but not the type of choir that I was experiencing inside before it was already born. Yeah. You know, I saw it um, in my head. I heard it in my head. I couldn't see the full picture of what it would look like and mm. sound like. I felt it. You know, mm. and so I went to um, a couple of churches to find out if I can use their church halls to, yeah. you know, and I got turned down quite a few times. Oh. And mm. I thought, I'm like, all right, cool. <laughs> 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 you know, there's plenty of other places out there, yeah. and they just couldn't capture the vision. Right. Okay. You know, mm. my vision wasn't their vision. They wanted to use their community centres or their, not even community centres, their church halls for other reasons and so their reason wasn't my reason so um, I went to um, 
another building called the Zion Art Center in Manchester. And um, there was a lady who was a uh, project manager at the time, Sharon Clark. Never forget this lady, man. She's still around. <laughs> and um, I went there boldly and said to her, um, I'm looking for a space to start um, a singing group or a community choir. And at the time, Zion Art Center was um, uh, going through some difficulties, some challenges. So she's like, uh, if you can get at least 20 people here a week, you can have the room for free. So I was like, done. <laughs> the first four weeks I only had 12 people. <laughs> <laughs> but I was still putting the chairs out, mm -hmm. still putting out 20 chairs. Mm. And I got that concept from one of my earlier mentors, um, a guy called Errol Williams, who had brought me into a room to talk about my... Um, plans for the next five years mm -hmm. this was when i was like 20 <laughs> okay so errol used to be like an usher at our church he used to come early he used to put the chairs out and um and the chairs were filled with church members and so on but then he started to run his own um uh personal development classes and he used to put like 20, 30, 40 chairs out, but there was only like six of us turning up, you know? Mm -hmm. So it was of often asked the question, why are you putting out so many chairs? I was like, don't worry, they're going to be filled, man, don't worry. <laughs> you know? That yeah. wasn't for us to be concerned about, yeah. but yeah, we had to help put the chairs out and <laughs> you know, come up. So that came flooding back to me mm. when it was time to put the chairs out at mm. Zion Art Center. We did our first concert in, I set it up in 2006, Mm -hmm. and um, we had our first concert uh, Christmas 2006 with just um, 12 people. Okay. I wasn't, you know, I don't play an instrument fluently, you know, efficient, well enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the irony. <laughs> I'm very proficient at playing an instrument. <laughs> I'm only trying to use big words. <laughs> anyway. Um, but I could accompany an F-sharp major. Mm -hmm. I got stuck, or I made myself stuck um, in F sharp major from school. Mm. In school, I taught myself how to play piano, mm. um, but one of the music teachers started me off in C, mm -hmm. playing in C major, and that was all the white keys. And I thought, well, it would be interesting to play all the black keys and see what all the black keys come with, you know? But yeah. um, little did I know at the time that the spirituals are written in the black keys, minor keys, you know? Mm. Mm. So I got stuck in playing in F sharp major. Mm. You know? mm. So when it came to our first concert, fast forward back to Zion Art Center Christmas time, all our songs, all the songs that we sang were in F sharp major. <laughs> <laughs> so we've done, you know, gospel choir singing in F sharp major. <laughs> <laughs> no different to, you know, go into a classical concert mm -hmm. where the songs are in C minor or yeah. whatever, you know. But not that all the songs are in C minor, I mm. believe. But yeah. however, um after that concert there was interest, you know. People mm. were like, Oh, how can I join? I was like, I'll just come along. You know, we practice on this day. Um it was on a Tuesday night, it was always on a still on a Tuesday night. Yeah. <laughs> um and folks were welcomed to come. And so That's what I found there was a floating and the um, it was a high turnover of um, people coming in to join after a term of doing, you know, a term will be will look like 13 weeks or so. And then after that 13 weeks, we'll, you know, end of that 13 weeks, we'll do a concert and then a new group of people will come in. Folks who wanted to move on to something else, they, they'd left and gone on to something else. So it, it was rolling. Um, and I thought, oh, this is really cool. Mm. And that was from 2006. <laughs> To date, we have at least about maybe 120 something on 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 our books, yeah. um, um, and at the moment, I've uh, minimised the um, the amount of people that come out because of you know I'm keeping I'm still keeping restrictions yeah. in in place and so mm. on. Um, so we're down to 30 people, um, but still you've got lots of folks that still want to. Oh, can I register next time as well? It's mm. a first come first serve basis. You know? Right. Yeah. Anyway, um, so 
the the idea of starting the choir was to um, support people mm -hmm. in whichever way, shape or form they needed that support for themselves. But the service was there, you know, mm -hmm. the singing service was there. Its ethos was faith. Its ethos was to um, introduce or reintroduce faith to people, mm -hmm. you know, just to kind of like have faith, not so much in themselves, but look out with look look out there you know feel out there some people again you know would again call it god or call it whichever you know mm. you've got that narrative but i wanted to be a bit more specific mm -hmm. mm. it's christian faith you know it's gospel faith it's whatever you know it, but it's that bit mm -hmm. that you do sing about jesus and you know folks are like oh, i don't know if i want to sing about Jesus. <laughs> i'm like well that's completely up to you but that's what it is yeah yeah, yeah and i'm not afraid of it you know um i have my own idea of um, a man who walked the earth, who spread joy and spread, you know, w w all the good teachings. I'm like, well, why not? Hmm. <laughs> I'd rather that than someone else who's gonna, you know, influence me in some other way, whereas I'm not going to be of benefit to a wider world. So I thought, well, hey, why not? This is what it is. Hmm. Yeah. And unashamedly about it, um, I had to, do a lot of homework, inward work about how I would um, allow make that happen. Mm. And I had to not make it about the church. I had to make it about faith. Mm. A lot of people have uh, had bad experiences of church, mm. no matter what denomination they're from. And um, I felt I was brought into the on the planet to the planet to not be some savior or anything but to bring about understanding and um and the understanding was about um yes these institutions were built by man were built by you know and orchestrated and also um formed in different ways that wasn't really suited to people's way of living and way of being and way of whatever the way was mm. but it was something that wasn't working for a lot of people mm. and there needed to be something neutral and that neutralness if it were was about finding god in themselves mm. and that was faith to me mm. was being able to find god in you and that's what the choir was about mm. Um, and so folks that would come to choir enjoyed it. They had their own experiences. Some people um, were asking questions about, you know, am I going to go to hell because I'm this or, or you know, is, is it right to do this? And I'm like, look, you mm. work that out with God. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Mm. I'm not here to give you the answer. Yeah. The only answer I can give you are options. Mm. You, know, mm. you choose, you know, mm. and... The only option there was, well, ask God, read this book. And all these things, these uh, tools was for them to use for themselves, to find God in themselves, you know, for the answer they're looking for. Because yeah. I certainly didn't have the answer for them, except mm. these are the tools. Yeah. And I was able to do that because I did that for myself. And I found the answer, but my answer isn't everyone else's answer. Your answer isn't everyone else's answer. Mm -hmm. um, and so the choir became, for me, more than just um, a singing experience. It became more of a lifestyle. I've, the only time I've missed the Tuesday is if I'm not well mm. or if I'm working away. Hmm. <laughs> since, to, since it started? Since it began. Wow. Nice, yeah. well. I was driven. Yeah. Committed, of course. <laughs> yeah. It's a beautiful thing, Mom. You know, and so that became my baby. Yeah. And um, I didn't know what it would look like, what it would sound like. I just knew that it was something that I wanted to do and something that I needed to do. And uh, yeah, so we've been through so many experiences. Of late, since 2016, we did the. Um, in fact, 2016, hour, ten years of doing the choir was um, give me a little message if you need also my year of yes. And that's because um, I went through a period of 
um, not wanting to do things from my own right. fear. Yeah. You know, yeah. and uh, competitions was one of those things. Mm. And so when the choir members were like, oh, we should do this, we should do that competition. And I'm like, no, it, we're, we're not a competitive choir. <laughs> da, 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 da. And then my um, administration, uh, ad admin, sorry, choir admin came to me and she said, uh, um, but Wayne, this is your year of yes. <laughs> 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 I was like, oh. <laughs> right. <laughs> what they were inquiring about is they wanted to do the um, Songs of Praise, um, mm. BBC Songs of Praise Gospel Choir of the Year. Mm -hmm. And I went to the choir. By this time, we had about 79, 80 people right. in the choir. And um, I said to them all, if we're going to do this, then this is next level. This is no more sing for fun. <laughs> yeah, it's sing to work and sing for, sing with meaning, sing with passion and sing with understanding to deliver a bigger message and a stronger message. So it's no more willy-nilly, oh, yeah, that was nice. Oh, you come and have a go. This weren't no have a go type of time. Mm. You know, this was like serious business. Yeah, yeah. And I said to them, if you guys want to do this, we're going next level. Mm. We're raising the bar, <laughs> mm. you know? Mm. They got the shock of their lives. <laughs> 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 so I said, yes. So we were like two weeks before the deadline of handing in our audition songs. Mm. But I thought that the songs that you hand in were just an idea of what the choir sound like and an idea of what you might do and so on. Um, but it wasn't. So I handed in Swing Low, like I want a competition with singing Swing Low. And I handed in another song called um, Be Like Him, which was a um, um, an African song with different dialect and mm. you know I'm just getting you know a, a British choir singing <laughs> you know quasi a choir bona carla you know singing Zulu language yeah yeah and stuff and this is your like middle class to upper class to you know whatever class or whatever yeah. um, backgrounds of people singing this yeah. Yeah. so I so after speaking to a guy called Ken Burton another great um great of mine um, mentor stroke great friend works on BBC Songs of Praise um, who said to me well the songs that you handed in are the songs that you're actually going to be <laughs> performing <laughs> <laughs> so then I had to quickly conjure up um, an arrangement of Swing Low because it weren't going to be no you know yeah. Um, back in the day, swing low, swing <laughs> <carry>. <laughs> nah, no, gotta no spice way, this up, man. Yeah. We've got a jerk chicken this one up. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, there we were, there I was actually, um, doing an arrangement to this song and also to the African, um, song that we did as well. And, uh, we had about three, four weeks before we had to travel down to London for this um, BBC Gospel Choir of the Year. Um, amongst us were other um, people that I knew who were directors of other choirs. Mm -hmm. They're like, Wayne, I hear you going to the, you're doing the competition. And I was like, yeah, it's like, we got no chance, mate. And I'm like, you've got a great chance, man. You know, you're a great singer. You know, you've, you're directing a great choir. Da -da 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 -da. It made me realize where people had put me. Mm. Mm. I quickly humbled myself, you know, I was soon to humble myself, but I was very firm with my choir. Mm. I wasn't about winning yeah. in terms of coming back with a trophy. Well, I kind of was. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. A little, little, little bit. bit. No, no yeah. hiding that. <laughs> yeah. the, thing, the thing is, I wanted them to know and to feel what it is to work hard to to get to the prize. Mm. Mm. And whether the prize was one that we came back with in our hands or not, it was the prize was really about working hard, feeling that you've put a lot into it and coming back with a greater purpose and a greater meaning to go to the, the next level. Mm. Mm. 
we came back with a trophy, which I'm happy to say. Um, and the way that the, it made the choir feel, you know, they were like, gosh, we did it. Oh, my gosh. But mind you, I had to choose 40 people out of, mm. you know, mm. 70 to 90 people or so. Um, but I was very transparent with the choir. Um, I let them know who I've chosen. Um, I let them know uh, uh, if your name's not called, um, don't be upset. If you you can be upset if you want to, but I will, just so you know, I won't be owning what you feel if your name's not called to be in the competition. That's for you to do because I ain't got time, mm. you know. Um, and so the people who came to do it, you know, they weren't all singers. Excuse me. Sorry. All right, love. Mm -hmm. You're gonna edit that out, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't all singers, but they were individuals who had a heart to deliver a message from their own character, from their own personality. They were the ones who needed to be seen by others, mm. for others to see that, oh, if that older person's up there singing, that means, you know, just giving that person a bit of hope. Mm. Mm. So it wasn't just about who can sing and who can't sing you know mm. um, I had to think about the mixed range of people yeah. to be involved male and female and I had to think about the audience who in the audience is going to be inspired when they see you mm. Mm. is your you know are your audience going to hear you or in fact are they going to feel you before yeah. they hear you you know, are they going to feel your character? Are they going to feel your personality before you even open your mouth to sing something? We all do it. We all see um, character before and we judge a character before we hear them. But then our minds are blown once their mind, once their mouth are open to sing or to play something. Mm. It totally changes it. Yeah. So I had to think about the facade of the choir. And we went through all of that, the movement, the way they moved mm -hmm. together and the way they looked together and the way they sounded together but it was all from the had to come from the inside out yeah 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 so that was the manchester inspirational voices there's there's a massive story you know mm. yeah one that continues on yeah so if people wanted to check out that stuff where where do they need to look where yeah well currently um we're not recruiting at the moment okay However, keep an eye out on the website for when we are recruiting again. Um, but we rehearse at the um, St. John's um, se uh, Centre in Old Trafford um, every Tuesday from 7 till um, quarter to 9. I might as well say 9 o'clock because we don't finish till late. <laughs> 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 um, uh -huh. uh, but this season... Um, Oh, we we started back last September, right? And I've broken it down to seasons and stuff. So last year was September to um, Christmas time. We rehearsed for our Christmas concert. Mm -hmm. This time round, we're doing a music video. Um, we we did our album um, in 2019, and so we're doing some songs from that. Um, a music video. It's turning into a concert type of thing, <laughs> a live recording. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, and we're looking at what well, again the, the theme for that is a message of hope, um, and everything is geared towards someone around the world that's going to need to hear a message of hope, mm -hmm. no matter which song it is, or even if it's just the look of the choir that will give them a bit of hope. Something of that video, or of that visual, I'm hoping it that it will reach somebody. Mm. So. That's where we are. You can see some of our stuff on YouTube. Yeah. You know, um, and uh, yeah, check out our album on, um, so on uh, what do you call them? Spotify. 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 Yeah. We're not on Spotify. Not actually, on Spotify. Not iTunes, yeah. Apple iTunes, Music. Apple Music, yeah, yeah. yeah um, Amazon um, Music and uh, yeah. On YouTube as well, you can find mm -hmm. us there Streaming on, on those services. platforms. There we go. <laughs> That's so, the word. <laughs> <laughs> so you can find our material on stream platforms. 
<laughs> nice. <laughs> and if people wanted to find uh, the rest of your work and the other things that you do, Wayne, where would you direct them? Yeah, so I would direct folks to go to um, any of my socials. Um, uh, I use Instagram, Wayne Ellington 7. I use um, Twitter, again, Wayne Ellington 7. Um, LinkedIn, Wayne Ellington. Um, YouTube, Wayne Ellington, but put singer in there okay because right. you know otherwise are oh, you you play basketball as well <laughs> <laughs> i don't Ooh. look like the guy that play basketball <laughs> you know I mean? so, <laughs> uh, um so yeah be sure to put wayne ellington singer and then you'll find everything about wayne ellington who sings and you know a lot of his work awesome um, online and is there anything you want to tell people about that's going on the rest of the year anything you want to let them know about What's going on throughout the rest of the year? Well, we we are planning um, in April our um, music live um, video, and that's for an audience to come and be a part of oh. as cool. well. Um, the venue is being sourced, mm -hmm. um, and uh, but it's it will be on the 9th of April. I'm not moving the date to <laughs> the 9th of April. Yeah. And uh, yeah, uh, it will be a ticketed event for folks to, if they want to be part of our music video, you know, um, uh, you coming to. But uh, one thing I'd like to put out there as well is I'm, I'm quite a, a, a favorite of um, investing in, in people. You know, and it's also investing in community work mm. um, and also I invested myself you know this is an investment for me and for um, this podcast as well which I do hope that you'll get lots of other up and coming and also lots of other known artists and speakers and whoever in you know, mm. my hope for this is, is that it will be great. It's already great. <laughs> Thank you, Wayne. That it will thicken, mm. you know, that the weight of it will, will thicken and that the thickness of it will be something strong enough for others that are coming up to stand on. You know, it's a great platform. Thank um, you, Wayne. That you're putting out there. So, so yeah. So, Manchester Mission, but Inspirational Voices, the 9th of April. Just look out for where that's going to be at. Brilliant. I do have one more question yeah. before we finish today, Wayne. Um, and that is, if you could sum this podcast up in three words, what would it be? Okay. Exhilarating. Ooh, good word. Meaningful. Mm -hmm. And... I've got two more put a hyphen between them That's yeah fine. okay <laughs> <laughs> deliberately purposeful hmm i think those that might be the the most like mm. meaningful mm -hmm. three words people don't be just throw out just you know yeah. it's it's really good or yeah. something like that mm. I mean, Thank I have got would. the wall right here. I could read out a few of them for you. Oh, <laughs> George, no. <laughs> uh, a, a personal favourite of mine, broccoli parsnip radish. There you go. Broccoli that, parsnip that, radish. That shows the calibre of normal. Yeah. So <laughs> thank you for giving me yours there, Wayne. Yeah, um, it's been a, a, a real pleasure mm. having you on today, Wayne. You're yeah, exactly great. the person that I needed on this podcast today. Mm -hmm. So thank you for coming in and talking with us. Absolute pleasure. I wish you all the best with the future stuff and we will definitely get you on at some point yeah. later in the future, definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah. I hope you all enjoyed it at home. Go and check out Wayne's stuff. He's, he's doing a lot of really great work out in the Manchester community and wider. Um, Kim, is there anything you want to tell the people before we go i just feel like i've been on a journey honestly i, I haven't know. contributed anything i'm just <laughs> sitting here taking it all in you know yeah I, I hope i hope you guys have enjoyed it as much yeah. we're, we're, yeah. we're putting out different podcasts every week with different artists um you know we want to promote all the great great work that's going on in manchester so please subscribe to us on youtube if you're enjoying what you're seeing we're on all good audio podcasts and all that sort of stuff we'll be back again next week of course and uh Without further ado, this is episode 53 of the podcast over. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you again soon. Goodbye. 
Thank you for listening. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast to catch up on new episodes every week. Also, check us out on our Facebook and Instagram at Rec Rooms, where you can find out about our other exciting music series. We also have this and all our other episodes of the podcast up on our Rec Rooms YouTube channel for your viewing pleasure. See you next time.